When subtracting larger single-digit numbers from teen numbers or even larger numbers, sometimes it's easiest to take from the 10 instead of counting back. Starting at 13 and counting back 9 would take a long time. Meanwhile, many students know how much they can take from the 10 very quickly and efficiently. So for instance, students show 13 as 10 and 3. That's an easy idea for them because they've been working on their teen numbers as 10 and some ones since kindergarten. Now let's see. If I take the 9 from 3, I need to take away this and some more. But I can take 9 from the 10 very quickly. 13 minus 9 equals 4. I have 1 left when I took 9 from 10, and then my 3 stayed the same. We can do this with a picture as well. So let's say we're doing the same number, 13 minus 9, the same subtraction sentence. I can imagine my 10 and 3 more. Let's take 9 from 10, and I see I have 4 left. This is helpful with lots of different kinds of problems. Let's do 15 minus 7. I have my 10, and I have 5. For students that know how many they'd have left when they take 7 from 10, this can be a fast problem. 15 is made of 10 and 5. I take away 7 and I'm left with 3. 3 and 5 equals 8. And the same can be done pictorially. I would have 10 and 5 more. I can take away 8 in one quick thought to see that I have 2 and 5 left to make. Sorry. I take away... I take away, <laughs> I was taking away seven, so I take away seven. I'd have three and five left, which makes eight. It also is a nice way for students to see if they made any mistakes like I just did, because the fact of 10 minus seven is one that students know well, or 10 minus eight or 10 minus nine. So they can look at their work and quickly see if they made a mistake, like I did, whereas taking away seven can be more challenging to check if you've made a mistake if you don't yet have quick fluency with the fact itself.